From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed here, Johnny. Well, George, I'm really glad to talk to you. Oh? Why do you say it that way? Because every insurance case I handle for that company of yours pays me a nice fat fee. And right now, I can use a little extra cash. Well, now, Johnny... So tell me all. What's Floyd's of England upset about this time? Well, I'm not sure. Uh Uh-oh, here we go again. But, Johnny, I just received a transatlantic telephone call from Paris, France, from a man who wanted to contact you but didn't know where to call you. And he identified himself only as Le Chagri. Ah? Le Chagri. It's French, Johnny. No. And I believe it means the gray cat. Yeah. And George, the name fits him. You know him, then? His real name is de Marsac. He probably knows more about the dark alleys and back streets of Paris. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah, and about the people. In other words, the underworld. What did he call about? He mentioned the Blue Madonna. The what? It's a painting, Johnny. A small oil painting by a modern artist named Vincent Bardot. It's owned by Mr. Kingsley Holland down in Philadelphia. Yeah? It hangs in the Gavin Galleries, and we've insured it for $12,000. Well, what did he have to say about it? Only that you're to call him. His number there in Paris is uh, Orleans 57722. Uh-huh. That he has some very interesting information for you about that painting. Oh, sure. That he'll be glad to give me for a price. Exactly. I can't for the life of me figure what his interest is in it. If there were anything amiss, I'm sure the gallery would have called me. George, if you knew that character as well as I do, you'd okay my expense account without even looking at it and be willing to pay me that big fee I was talking about. What do you mean? Want to make a bet? What kind of a bet? I'll give you odds of ten to one that whatever's hanging in that gallery down there in Philadelphia is not the Blue Madonna. What? Now, look, Johnny, good heavens. George, I'll be talking to you. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, North American office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Blue Madonna matter. Expense account item one, $12 even for a phone call to my underworld contact in Paris, France. A man by the name of Dumarsac, who calls himself the Grey Cat. Oh, oui, Monsieur Dollar. This is your old, your very dear friend, Le Chagri. Very dear friend, huh? Now listen, you telephone George Reed that you have some real hot information about a painting his company insured. Ah, oh, oui, Le Madonna Bleu. What did you call the Blue Madonna? Okay. How much do you want this time? Oh, Monsieur... You touch me to the quick. Well, one might think that I slave and suffer and risk my life on your behalf only for money. How much, to my sec? See, uh, one thousand dollars. A thousand? Look, if your info's worth anything, I'll send you a check for fifty bucks. Fifty bucks? No. Uh, Nine hundred? Okay, I'll make it seventy-five. But, monsieur, seven fifty? How about an even hundred? Five hundred. Two. Four? Three, that's final. Oh, please. Two Okay, two hundred. Oui. Eh? No. It's all settled. Two hundred bucks. Now, what about the Blue Madonna? Uh-huh, yes. It is now here in Paris. Yeah, where? In the shop of Monsieur Dubesson on the Rue du Pas de les Moules. Dubesson? Huh. You sure it isn't just a copy that he'll try to foist it off on some wealthy sucker? <laughs> Dubesson is a crook, an evil crook, but he is an honest one. Oh, sure. Yes, and he knows the works of art. Also, he's very clever. To get his price, he will wait until the real Madonna is discovered missing. If it really is, that's what I'll check on now. And then you will will send me the $500, my very dear friend. $200, remember? Ah, oui, oui, I cheated myself. But, monsieur... Yeah? uh, Suppose I could find out who smuggled the painting into him, eh? Fine. That would be uh, worth a lot to you, no? Say, a thousand? We'll see. I'll be talking to you. Item 2, 420. I phoned to my old pal, Foster Harmon, down in Sarasota, Florida. Told him I'd pay his fare if he'd grab the first plane out and meet me in Philadelphia at the Bellevue Stratford Hotel. 
I knew that if anybody could identify the genuine painting, he could. Item 3, 940 for my own transportation to the city of brotherly love. Item 4, 950 cocktails and dinner for the two of us there at the Bellevue. Yes, the Blue Madonna is one of Vincent Bardot's best-known works. I don't think there's another living artist who could so effectively use various shades of just one color. But uh, what about it, Johnny? Well, first thing in the morning, I want you to come along with me and take a look at it. It's in the Gavin Galleries, isn't it, up on Walnut Street? Yeah, at least it's supposed to be. Suppose? Now, all I want you to do is take a good look at it, then reserve any comments until after we get out of the place. And? That's all. Well, but Johnny, Meantime, I... Meantime, I want to check with the owner of that painting. The telephone directory gave me Kingsley Holland's address. Item 4, 620 for a cab to a small apartment house out in West Philadelphia. Holland turned out to be... Well, I'd say he was about 30, short, lean, and nervous. With the surly expression of a man who feels the world hasn't done right by him. Yeah? You mean you're interested in buying the blue banana? Well, it, uh, it all depends, Mr. Holland. Uh-huh. Uh, look, Dollar, uh, that's what you said your name is? Yes, that's right, Johnny Dollar. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Uh, well, anyway, listen. Yeah? That gallery's got a price of fifteen oh eighteen thousand on it. But if you want to buy it direct from me, and right now, I'll give it to you for twelve. Save yourself a few thousand bucks, and it'll save me having to pay them there 20%. But if you've already commissioned the gallery to sell it for you... So, I'll tell them I changed my mind, that I want to keep it. Then when they find out that I've sold it, well, let them try and catch up with me and collect. Because me, I'll be right back in little old gay Paris. Back in Paris? Sure, I'd be there still, only I ran out of money. 12000 huh? That's exactly what it's insured for. And that's what they appraised it for when I got it from my uncle's estate. With all his money, what does he die and leave me with but a lousy painting? Well, do you want it? Uh, let me think about it. I'm uh, staying at the Bellevue Stratford. Sure, sure. Just don't tell them at the Gavin Gallery about our little deal, huh? But those crooks don't know, won't hurt it. Crooks? You think for a minute all that stuff they've got laying around the place is genuine? But the Blue Madonna is. You're sure? Huh? What do you mean by that? Just uh, stick around, Mr. Holland. Any reason why I shouldn't? I don't know. Is there? Now, wait a minute, Dollar. I'll be in touch with you. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the Blue Madonna matter. At Kingsley Holland, the owner of the painting recognized my name. I thought so. And if a switch in that painting had been made and he knew about it, well, I'd do well to look out for him. Yeah, the more I thought about it, the more certain I became that whatever hung in the Gavin Galleries was not the Blue Madonna. Item five, another six bucks for a taxi back to my hotel. Item six, five eighty, breakfast the next morning for Foster Harmon and myself. By ten o'clock, we were at the Gavin Galleries, looking at a pretty modern, but I must say, beautiful painting. It's amazing, Johnny, amazing. The most extraordinary... Well, I, I just can't believe it. Can't believe what, Foster? That it's the real thing or just a good copy of Oh, good morning, sir. That's just I'll it. You see? I've helped these gentlemen. Johnny. Hold it, Foss. Uh, that painting, you know, is a genuine Bardot. Yeah? My name is Johnny Dollar. This is Mr. Foster Harmon. Gentlemen, I'm Arnold Gavin. Um, you're uh, interested in buying the Blue Madonna? If this is really it. Uh, Johnny, listen. Wait, Foster. Uh, what is the price of it, Mr. Gavin? Uh, 20000 Mr. A dollar, did you say? Yeah, but, uh, wow, haven't you got a Bardot that's a bit cheaper? His Laconic Lagoon is priced at 10000 Holy. Well, how about a copy of this? Oh, Bardot has never allowed his works to be copied. Johnny, listen. Yeah, Foster, it looks like this stuff is too rich for our blood. No. Come on, let's go back to the Bellevue Stratford. No, listen. Uh, perhaps there's something else that might interest you. No, I'm afraid not, but thank you. That's quite all right. Now, uh, look, suppose I come back later. Johnny, listen. Come on, will you? Yeah, I'll uh, see you tomorrow again. Now, Johnny, just uh, take it easy. Well, Foss? It's a fraud, Johnny. It's a copy. I'm sure of it. Hey, hey, hey. Did you say that blue Madonna's a copy, mister? Yes. Wait, Foss. Well, I thought you were looking at it kind of funny there in the gallery. Yes, sir. It's a fraud. Foster. Now, you don't mind my asking, uh, who are you? 
Uh, my name is Foster Harmon. Harmon? From the John Ringling Museum down in Florida? That's right. Well, then you ought to know. Now, just a minute, mister. Say, uh, aren't you Johnny Dollar, the insurance investigator? So what? Who are you? Me? Well, I'm Rupe Alloway of Transworld News Service. News Service? Oh, fine. Yeah, I'll see you, boys, and thanks a lot. <sighs> well, Foss, it looks like you opened your mouth and stuck my foot in it. Well, I'm sorry, Johnny, but what I said is true. That blue Madonna is an imitation, a phony. That much I already knew. At least I was pretty sure of it. But don't you see the amazing thing? Well, Johnny, that copy is so perfect. So exactly in the style of Vincent Bardot, even to little things, little idiosyncrasies that even the finest copyists couldn't match. Certain minute details about an artist's work are as distinctive, as impossible to copy as a man's own fingerprints. Yeah, well... What I'm trying to say is that if I didn't know every brush mark on the original... Okay, Foss, forget it. Forget it? Hey, listen... Kingsley Holland, the owner, and I wouldn't trust him for a minute. I think he knows who I am. If so, and if he knows that painting is just a copy, well, he's pretty sure to figure out what I'm doing here. Johnny, he must know it's a copy. If he gave it to the galleries to sell. Perhaps. Or maybe the switch was made after it was hung there. Then what you're saying is that either one of them could be responsible for the fraud. That's right. How well do you know the Gavin galleries? Well, they're not very big. You could see that for yourself. And, of course, they're rather new in the business. I think I'd better get a rundown on this Arnold Gavin while we're waiting at the hotel. Waiting? What for? Well, you you plant a couple of seeds. You hope that one of them will sprout. I'm afraid I don't understand. Foss, I told both of them who I am in the hope they'd guess at why I'm here. I also gave them reason to suspect I think that blue Madonna's a phony. Well, I'm afraid that I may have led Arnold Gavin to feel that way. Same thing. I also made it very plain to them that I'm staying at the Bellevue Stratford. In other words... Good heavens, Johnny, if you mean what I think you do... Yeah? Like what, Foss? You think that one of them, the crook, will come to the hotel and try to... Try... Well, don't you see, Johnny, knowing that you're on to him, he, he might try to kill you. Can you think of a better way to bring him out in the open? Johnny... Come on, let's get back to the hotel and wait. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. After all, there was no reason to drag Foster any further into this mess, although I knew he began to see it through. So I paid him for all his expenses, that's item seven, 151 even, and sent him on back to Sarasota. Item eight, ten cents for a phone call to Sergeant Jerry Hawkins at police headquarters. About mid-afternoon, he called me back. Boy, did you ever start a riot. Well, what'd you find out for me about Gavin and Holland? Well, Holland's just a lazy kid that's been trying to live off his relatives all his life. And Gavin? Okay, so far as we know. But listen, you seen the papers? No. The story about that phony painting is on every wire service in the country. All you can see in the headlines is that name Bardot. And I don't mean Bridget. Johnny, you and that Foster Harmon ought to collect a publicity fee. Are you holding Gavin or Holland? Well, what on? Sure, the boys have questioned both of them, but... Unless we can show some evidence that one of them pulled the switch. Johnny, you got any ideas? Yeah, Jerry. Suddenly, I think maybe I have. Well, then start talking so I can make a pitch. No, I don't think you will. What do you mean, if you know who did it? Oh, I didn't say that. But, uh, Jerry, I've got a hunch, a real potent one. And if it's right... Yeah? Well, read tomorrow's papers. Huh? Item nine, half a buck for an evening paper and a tip for the bellboy who brought it up to me. Yeah, the sergeant was right. This was the most free advertising any artist has had in years. Prices on genuine Bardot's were skyrocketing. As for the fake Blue Madonna, I put in a fast call for Paris. But before the operator could get it through... Yeah? Arnold Gavin, Mr. Dollar. Well, Mr. Gavin... Do you see what has happened? Have you seen the papers? I sure have. And the police have closed my shop, my galleries. Can you blame them? But don't you understand? I've had offers of up to 30,000 for the Madonna. I've received wires offering me nearly 20,000 for the other Bardot, uh, the the real one. No kidding. Well, I'll show you how much I'm kidding. I've cabled Bardot to paint some more for me, paint anything. Don't you see? After all this publicity, we'll make a million. So it was you that rigged this whole thing, huh, Gavin? I, Mr. Holland? Why, of course not. Sure, to raise the price of some of your lousy paintings. How can you say that? You who gave me that copy. Expert, huh? 
You trying to tell me you didn't know that was a copy? No. It was only this morning when the authority from Sarasota, uh, when I called in the people from the museum here in Philadelphia. Uh, do you know what they said? What? And it better be good. They said the only one who could have made that copy... Wait a minute. ...the only artist in the world who could have possibly... Hold it. Hold everything. Holland, you said you got that painting from your uncle's estate. That's right. It was willed to me. Where did your uncle get it? Why, for... Well, listen. I'm listening. Dollar that Madonna was smuggled into. Smuggled? That's right. But by whom? Well, believe it or not... I think I can tell you who. And if this is my call to Paris, well, maybe I can even tell you where he is now. Johnny Dollar. This is your dear and faithful friend, Le Chagri. Good. Now listen. And for the information I can give you this time, oh, oh, you will have to pay me a vast sum of money. You're about to tell me that the Blue Madonna was smuggled into Paris by none other than the artist himself. What's this? By Vincent Bardot. Exactly. So that should be worth it, but how did you know? All right. All I want to know now is where is he? You know. <laughs> He's not in Paris. Where is he? For a hundred bucks? A hundred and fifty? Three hundred. Oh, for that much, I'll find out for myself. Goodbye. No, no, no. Okay, two hundred or I hang up on you. Well, only for you, my best, my oldest friend. Where? He is aboard the plane for the United States. I might have guessed it. He has the Madonna Blue with him. He received the cable this morning. Great. I'll send you a check. You hear any of that, Mr. Gavin? Holland? Uh, yes, but I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, I sure don't. Then maybe this call will help you. Headquarters? Sergeant Jerry Hawkins. Yes, sir? Sergeant Hawkins? You can have the boys in New York pick him up or wait for his plane to arrive here in Philadelphia. Johnny! If you're sure you really have any charges against him. What? Yeah, he's on his way in from Paris. The guy who painted the copy of the Blue Madonna. Or maybe this is really the original over here. Huh? Well, at any rate, he'll have the other copy with him. So do you want to tell the papers or shall I? Look, will you make sense? Oh, and his name is Bardot. Bardot? That's right, Vincent Bardot. Well? You you mean that he... that he painted two of them? Sure, with probably something like this in mind. I can't believe... And look, look what it's done for him. Put him on the map. Anything he paints now will net him a fortune. And I don't think you'll suffer particularly either, Mr. Gavin. Well, no. As for you, Holland, well, you'll get a lot more than you thought for that painting of yours. <laughs> Man, what a fast... Sure. But you know something? What, Mr. Dollar? Hmm. I just wonder if Le Chagri was in on this thing with him from the beginning. Le Chagri? So help me, I wouldn't put it beyond him. Mm. Sure. Sure he was in with Bardot. And probably collecting plenty from him. Anyhow, the insurance company is not anything. But I hope they'll be a lot more careful the next time they insure a painting. Any so-called original. Expense account total, including 400 for Le Chagri, the hotel, and the trip back to Hartford, $620 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were G. Stanley Jones, Forrest Lewis, Harry Bartell, Joseph Kearns, Bert Holland, and Byron Kane. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.